But you know, I hear about how there aren't enough engineers coming out of schools. I don't hear necessarily that there aren't enough designers coming out. You're not really hearing that yet from certain parts of the business community the same kind of way. I know you're feeling it when you're looking for people to hire, but I'm not necessarily hearing it from, you know, from the top echelons of companies the same way. Well, but I think that's because it's, there's a difference between designer as, as a role, as, a, as an education, where you're talking about someone that's probably doing visual or product design very, very obviously, very overtly. What we're talking about is design as catch-all cloud term. And when you talk about skill set, you're actually talking about a series of skills. It, you know, the more complicated the world gets, the more complicated that toolkit has to become. So there's always kind of this rising tide of a few individuals that both have the deep knowledge and the skill set to approach whatever your challenge is, whatever industry you're in. That there's always kind of a diminishing amount, you know, number of people that are at the upper echelon of that capability. So it is, I think it's always going to be a, a massive war for talent from here on out. I think there are tons of designers graduating. The market is flooded That's with right. them, but there's just that one small strip that we are interested in. It's yeah. just that bend. There's the, so many programs now um, that teach design thinking, but if you can't back it up with deep skill in one area, like you can't just come in and be a thinker in an organization. It's that balance. I, I always say I'm looking for designers who are also builders. You have to be able to think from the start to the end and iterate, you know, in between. One of the themes that I hear, and tell me if I'm wrong, if, if there's any disagreement on this, but it's just a sense that they want the, the broadest uh, set of problems to solve. You know what I mean? It's like that's the promise, that's the conversation we end up having is you'll be able to do this and this and this and this and that's the thing that seems to spark interest. Um, if they feel like they're going to be working on one specific, on one specific client, and one specific type of, you know, um, one notion of design, then that's, that's, that's oftentimes a thing that, that turns them off. So. I, I couldn't agree more with Neil. I mean, it took us six months to hire our head of UX six months, which I thought was a really long time. That's actually not bad. <laughs> no, that's Robert, it's actually not that bad. But once we got that critical person in place and we were able through him in part to articulate, you're gonna work on solving problems around health, around transportation, around energy, it became a real calling card. Yeah. One of the challenges is you're bringing in a lot of these designers, they are young, and it's hard to get them to sometimes see the bigger picture or the management part of what you have to do. And is that is that sort of a when you're looking for these for the designers? Are most of them young? Some of the best designers I've got are right out of school, right? They haven't been jaded. They don't know that things aren't possible, right? And they work, 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 and they love what they do. But they're not trained to bring a whole room together on an idea. It can be very stressful. One thing on this, and this is, the, this is kind of an invisible force in this, but it's a significant one, which is, is how many of them want to be self-starters and not work with companies even. Yes. I mean, that's, that's the other huge element that we're, we're combating when we talk about the fight for talent. We have so many people who say, well, I can put my idea on Kickstarter, be funded within a week and a half. Or be bought by you later. Exactly. Yeah. So like, so that, that's a, another huge element in terms of the war of talent. And, and, it, and it, I mean, a, a lot of it is youth because they're used to what we'd consider chaos. Um, and, they, and, and they have a, a totally fresh notion of problem solving. But we are competing. But when, then when you go younger, you are competing with more kind of, um, uh, there's more of a fight for their time and interest. The other, the other thing I think that's really interesting, having a 26-year-old, uh, is how they look at that growth opportunity, uh, you know, a cul-de-sac in a big company versus staking it on your own. I mean, the life lessons are, I mean, it's hard to compete with that, right, as, a, as an organization, right, that kind of freedom. Um, I, 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 and we already acknowledge that what they're wired for, they're wired for you know, the problem, mm -hmm. right? The richness of the problem. So it's a, it's a tough thing. I think that's what you have to do. Oh, no, no. I, what I have found, though, just the counter of that is I think there's an appeal, and maybe I'm seeing it representing a big company, to coming into a big company that doesn't have a long history of design thinking, mm -hmm. user experience, interaction, and feeling as though you're leading that mission. I think that can be creating compelling. Something. Exactly. You're creating something. You're not a Kickstarter, but you're a GE creating a new, a new way of thinking. So I think that can be in talk 
intoxicating, at least that's what we found. I agree. I think if you frame the purpose and the possible impact, you can create that in big, big companies. Yeah. But back to like, why are they always, do they have to be young? Uh, <laughs> um, uh, I, I read this somewhere, I don't know if it's true or not, but that our, the, the, uh, our brains, uh, I think it's slightly different from males and females, but at their optimal, you know how they like to say that your sexual peak is blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Literally your mental peak, your brain processing, pure power, creativity, blah, 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 peaks at 28 for men. And, and it goes downhill from there. So I'm, I'm, I'm like maybe half a man. <laughs> so, yeah, long so many other So no comment. So, so that combined with the fact that, I mean, we're in technology business, so that, you know, these guys were born native to the tools of social behavior that I can never, as much as I try, can never quite, you know, be them. So I think I, I pretty much give them the reins. It's kind of like, you know, you lead and we just get out of the way or we make it so you can lead. Um, that's how we attract talent. I think we need to rely on that because, yeah. you know, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. It's, it's not just about the age for us as well. We have design in 14 countries. There's no diversity. When you're trying to facilitate or enhance human connection in coffee houses and products, Where's the diversity? I, I don't think I've ever interviewed a, a Hispanic architectural designer. Um, and we're reaching out. We're doing it. I think there's going to be a 10-year span. In about 10 years, I think there'll be more diversity. Um, so I think that's a real problem for us. And that's something we may want to concentrate on. And we all can affect positively. Everyone that works for me is under 30. And the thing that I found is that as much as they want diversity of projects, which they definitely do, it's like the broader and the more, the more impactful, the, the better. I feel like what's actually driving that when you sort of chase it to its root is this deep desire to learn, which is why they're drawn to startups. They're drawn to and whatever environment is going to help me grow the fastest <laughs> is what's going to get me pumped up because it's sort of how our brains are wired. So I, I basically make it my mission to both convince candidates coming in and deliver for people that work for, for Undercurrent, you will learn more faster here than any other environment, period. So, which basically means I'm competing with how much they would learn if they ran their own startup. <laughs> and that creates a very serious and heavy mandate for, for the environment you put them in, for what you allow them to do, for the risks you allow them to take. Um, it's, and it's not always possible to deliver, obviously, but I think that's, my competition is basically how much would they learn at NASA, at their own startup, at you know a Stanford program, at Y Combinator, um, and how do you how do you sort of drive that? And if that happens, if you're delivering the learning, then I think everything else just falls out. Well, everybody wants to be Mark now, you know. So everyone wants to be an entrepreneur, and you're trying to create a, a, a situation where they can be that entrepreneur inside your organization or outside in in, in any way at all. Are, are there? Um, Sometimes I hear about complaints about uh, millennials that they, you know, they, uh, they, they don't really listen, they feel like they already know everything. Um, is this something you guys experience? Is I experienced there a... that yesterday at the job fair, a couple of times there. Yeah. Oh, really? At the team fair? Yeah, at the team fair. Yeah. That, that they feel like they're already... Yeah, and I was getting emails within an hour, like... I've launched my brand last week, now what's the next step? <laughs> and I, you know, I, it was just, it was amazing because the ambition is there, but you don't want to discourage, but there's obviously some time that has to go into to building brand and fundamental things that you just need to know. So for me, what I like to do is have some of my junior designers come in you know, the, the interns that are working in the office come in at some of the screen printing classes that I did a couple weeks ago, just the very fundamental things you have to understand. You can Twitter, you can get at anybody you want on Twitter and you can get product placement done. But do you have the follow-up? Can you actually deliver? And once I started to throw those questions back at some of the teams at my table, they froze. And they're like, oh yeah, I forgot about that part. <laughs> so, just trying to show just the simple, simple things on how to get to these, you know, these, these checkpoints because we've all put so many years into it and 
I didn't want to get offended. I'm like, I, this is 15 years in the making. Like, what are you talking about? You got to, you know, you got to put some more work in. But they don't necessarily want to hear that because there's so many tools that are accessible that can just make you look like you know what you're doing now when you don't necessarily have all the acumen to, to back that up. We don't want everyone to know how easy, how much we're faking it all. <laughs> <laughs> time, right? No, I actually have a, I, I don't disagree with you at all, but what I have found is that I think you can channel their impatience in ways that are productive for them and productive for the organization. So that's what I've tried to do. I mean, I, a small example, young woman on my team, God knows how old she is, you know, early 20s, came to me about a year ago and said, you know, I think GE should be experimenting on Instagram. I said, okay, it's probably something there. Why don't, why don't you go pursue that and see what it, you know, see what it could be? She took this on her own. We're probably the top fourth, fifth brand on Instagram, all thanks to her. <clears throat> so, you know, I think she did have impatience, and I, I don't know. I think sometimes, again, small example. She's not changing the world, but for us, it's a good move for our brand. So, I, I don't know. To me, Bob, I think you need to kind of find the places for it, or you risk. Millennials not wanting to be part of your organization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Use design to be provocative in your organization. It's, it's funny how simplicity can be provocative in a complex organization. <laughs> An alternative approach to the problem, a reframing, can be the world and um, clarity and simplicity and ease of use are all things that need to marry with the best of technology.